Um, my last topic I want to get to, and I got to be really quick with this, man. Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy. This is the guy that owns Barstool Sports who called uh, Angel Reese a freaking idiot on Twitter last year after she uh, taunted uh, Caitlin Clark after the uh, after they won the national championship. And, you know, he's just one of those guys that got a potty mouth. You know, uh, he just, you know, he just speaks how he want to speak and he don't care who he's a fan. And it is what it is, man. But he called out a lot of female basketball players and just flat out said that they was jealous of uh, of Caitlin Clark. This is how he said it. Okay, a couple hours away from uh, Iowa, South Carolina, Caitlin Clark, Gabby Marshall, Hannah Stokey company, uh, taking on the undefeated South Carolina team. Going to be a huge game, great game, probably the most uh, watched college basketball game women's of all time. The amount of hatred that Caitlin Clark is getting, not from like average people, average fans like myself who got captivated by her and the way she played and for two years have followed her journey and who has elevated women's hoop to a level nobody could ever imagine this quickly. I'm instead talking about former players, talking heads, race baiters. Jameel Hill, race baiter, says the only reason she's getting this coverage, she's white. Um, every UConn basketball player, Don, Diana Taurasi, um, who, Brianna uh, Chicken Fry, no, Brianna Miller, Brianna, the one who's won all the titles. Does Caitlin Clark need a championship to be considered one of the greats in women's college basketball history? Yeah, she does. <laughs> I think so. Jeannie R. Ariana, nobody wants to give this girl her flowers. Caitlin Clark, listen, are you people stupid? Jason Williams saying you can't be an all-time great until you win a title, even though she's on a team that isn't as talented as 90% of her competition. How stupid are these other women though how dumb how hating are they what about the woman who was at some press conference i guess she was like the all-time leading scorer back in the days of uh black and white tv and horse and buggy so you know, my record didn't get broken because i played with a man's ball we didn't have a three-point line i just don't think my record has been broken uh, because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating so unless you come with a men's basketball and a two-point shot you know. <laughs> it's not our fault you're fucking 100 years old. She broke your fucking record. But more importantly, how dumb are these other WNBA players who are crying? Oh, Caitlin, why is she getting off? She's elevating her game. Yeah, I know. She has a Gatorade commercial. State Farm. She's the face of the game. She's going to make tens of millions on endorsement. I offer her 10 million to play in my rec league because she puts asses in seats. People want to watch her. How don't you get that's elevating all of you? All of you that nobody really fucking cared about. It's elevating you to a stratosphere. Take advantage of it. We watch Caitlin play. We see you play. If you're great, these games are great. We keep watching. Your paycheck goes up. Everyone makes money. Instead, you're hating her and ripping it down. It's pathetic. It's pathetic wins, not just black, white. It's jealousy. It's, it's woman a woman crime. It's fucking jealousy. UConn, and I'm rooting for the men, but you UConn women, shut up. Give her her flowers. She's helping you. More people are watching her than ever watched you. So shut up and root for greatness. It's helping the whole game. Wake up. So here's my thoughts about it, and I'll be real quick. I'm not even going to be long on this. I, I think that was disrespectful. That whole that whole thing. That's more disrespect than what these girls that he's talking about was doing. Uh, Diana Taurasi was asked a question, uh, you know, uh, doing an interview, and she gave an honest answer. I I don't understand what kind of answer you expect to give, and I don't understand how, you know, just being honest about a rookie coming into a new league. Uh, you know, that that's that's just the reality of it. Yes, a rookie's going to come in, and a rookie's going to have a target on their back. That's what it that's what it is in every sport. Right. The the fact that people think that Caitlin Clark should get an exemption like I like no, like every rookie has gotten a smoke and you're going to get hazed as a rookie. You're going to be carrying bags. You're going to be the rookie. The fact that people expect that this girl, because she did so much for college basketball to it be exempt from all of that stuff is ridiculous to me. This is all Donna Tarasi said. About it from the you just mentioned Diana, like in the league, because there, there's some stars going to the WNBA. I know on the NBA side, like those guys, those vets are just like, all right, come get it, young fella. Right. When the college guys come out, they're waiting for him. I mean, Camilla's coming. 
Caitlin's coming. There's more than just that that are coming. What will the league have in store for them when they get there? Look, SVP, um, <laughs> reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's there's <laughs> levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. It, and you're going to see it on this side where, you know, they, you look superhuman playing against 18-year-olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. And, uh, you know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. Right on. That's perfectly. Now, this question wasn't even asked specifically about Caitlin. This was asked about rookies in general. And that was her response. And no one said Caitlin's uh, name. I, I, I think uh, uh, the interviewer mentioned uh, three or four rookies that was coming out. Uh, and Caitlin's name was mentioned. But to Diane didn't uh, mention Caitlin. She was speaking in rookies in general. The fact that people need to take this and be personally uh, offended for Caitlin because I don't think Caitlyn is offended by this. She might get motivated by it, like, yeah, I'm going to show you. But, yeah, it's a whole team of, of, of veterans in the league that's in their 20s and 30s, grown people who been been uh, playing basketball to eat for the last 5 to 10, 15 years in the case of Diana Taurasi that don't want a rookie coming in and, and still in their shine. So, yeah, they should be competitive like that. What you think they should be doing? I, he's acting like he should just – uh, uh, the the girls in the W should just invite her in and say, hey, just take the throne because you're going to take us to the mountaintop because you got so many friends. No, that's not what it is. We're competing. And she would appreciate people honestly trying to compete with her. She would she would welcome that because it's going to make her better. Right. So all of this, all of this, uh, man, you should be thanking her. She's going to save your league and all this stuff. You can miss me with all that. No, nobody's giving her a free pass. She's got to compete and earn her spot just like everybody else. And the number one pick uh, uh, that last year went to the team that she's going to this year, and she's a big girl. And the WNBA is still played in the post a lot, not quite like the uh, NBA is. They still go in the post to their big man down low. So good luck finding a team that's going to bring you in, give you the ball as the point guard, and make everybody on the team set screens for you like Iowa did and let you shoot 30-foot threes. I, I just watched the, uh, Phoenix Mercury uh, play last night just to see how, how they played. And nobody was coming down uh, jacking up threes. They was running offense, and they was going in the post. You know, so unless the NBA, the WNBA, and whatever team she goes to just change the whole philosophy and say, we're going to play five men out just like Iowa did, set tons of screens for her and just let her shoot 30-foot 30, 30 threes, I don't see that happening. A lot of people are going to watch these games and see that she's not duplicating what she did on the Iowa on the collegiate level against these 18-year-olds. And, and, and 19 year olds it's going to be totally different right uh but that's my thoughts on that man i thank y'all for joining the stream man. i got to get out of here i might jump back on the, uh tonight uh uh to get on some other topics man if i do it'll probably be for members only but i catch y'all everybody hit the thumbs up man and i catch y'all on friday with the full panel piece